man named Jesus, and he sat on the throne of unapproachable life where angels had to cover themselves with their wings and cry out how holy God is. But he looked down and he saw a gap between humanity and human relationship, and he said, I'm the only one that can pay the price. And so he leaves the riches and the glory and the praise and takes on the form of a man. And what he does is he comes down to earth and rides on the most humble animal like a donkey, receiving praise a week before his unjust death. And he goes through the most pain and trial. He gets whipped 39 times by a cat of nine counts. That's the legal limit. 40 was the legal limit in Rome, but 39 in case they miscounted. With shards of glass and nail ripping his back bare. On top of that, they beat him under unrecognition historical documents say. They say that he was unrecognizable to man, alien life and animal life. And on top of that, for miles, he carries a 200 pound cross, unbeaten with wooden. And his nails drip through his hands and his feet. And as he's hung, his hands are hung above his head, where he has to leverage the nails to lift himself up to breathe. And he's supposed to sell yourself for suffocation on the cross. Naked in front of many, the God that hung the world on the universe hangs bare naked on a cross. The God that spoke the waters across the sea stayed silent because there was a gift for you. And he would do it again. C.S. Lewis says that if he was the only man to find the Bible as a historical document, and he believed in God, that Jesus would go through all of that to do it again. And I say to myself, why would someone want to die for me? Why would someone do it? Hebrews 12, 2 says that looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. The devil tried to kill Jesus, and death was not his shameful act. But three days later, he conquers death and rises again, making the devil look like an idiot. He conquers something that he thought could end so it was the joy that was set before Jesus that where he endured the cross. What was the joy? You were the joy. You were the joy on the cross that he endured. You were the reason he stayed up. And if you were the only person to follow Jesus out of all the years that Jesus has existed, he would do it again just for you. And so the cross was something that was supposed to be a shameful act, something that was supposed to end it, but the cross was the way to life, a cross was eternal life. And I reached and pulled you out, but I fell in and I died. You don't know me, but you would tell everyone until you died. Because I saved your life. You don't know my name, you don't know who I am. If I saved you from falling in the falls and I fell and died, you would tell the world. Well, Jesus settled that 2,000 years ago. And so I don't know about you, but I want to tell the world. And tonight, if you've never heard Jesus Christ, if you don't know him, or you've been a little bit water. This is your time to say, Jesus, you're mine. This is an invitation to be a son and a daughter. It's not a rule book. It's an invitation to be a son. The cross isn't something. It's not a to-do list. It's not a chore list. The cross is you to be a daughter or a son again. And so I don't know about you, but Jesus is inviting you into communion and friendship with him and sonship. And if you were in the sound of my voice, and you've been running away from Jesus, Jesus is inviting you back into friendship. If you're in the sound of my voice, this is no coincidence that I'm all the way from Los Angeles at Niagara Falls telling you about the man that can save your life. And so if you are a human being in the sound of my voice that doesn't know Jesus Christ, the Son of God, fully God and fully man who humbled himself to take on the cross just for you, and you want to accept Jesus, make for the rest of your life. Jesus is after your heart, bro, and he wants you, and he, and he cares about you, and he loves you. Jesus wants your heart, bro, and he cares about you. And the things that happened in your past, all the lost time, redeemed in an instant, Jesus will do it again on the cross. And so the cross is a moment where we can come together in unison with the Father. And so if you need to get right with God, you get right with God. If you need to come to talk to one of us and get right with God, come talk to one of us. But the cross is an invitation to being a son and a daughter game. There's no shame.
shame. Everything you ever did, he drops in the sea of forgetfulness. And so every time you bring it up, he doesn't know what you're talking about. Every awful thing you ever did, he drops in the sea of forgetfulness. He has no idea what you're talking about. Jesus just wants to be your dad and your friend. I'm just here telling you how good my dad is. That's all I'm here doing.